please stand clear. The doors are closing. Please hold off while the train is moving. The next stop is Roosevelt Park's transit station. This is going to be a tour around Jacksonville and its uh, film history. The movie studios that were here back in the start in the 1910s and the 20s. Uh, it's going to start back in 1901 with the fire. So right now I'm on the corner of Union and Lee Street. And behind me, on that corner over there, is where the fire started in Jacksonville in 1901. Now there is no marker here, but there is one nearby that I'll go and check out. Let's see, Jacksonville's 1901 fire, the Great Fire. May 3rd, 1901 at 12.30 p.m. A fire began at the Cleveland Fiber Factory, 10 blocks northwest of the site. Chimney embers ignited sun-dried moss to be used as mattress stuffing, fueled by wind. In dry weather, the fire roared east, destroying most structures in its path. At 3.30 p.m., the fire reached the site then called Heming Park. The park is renowned live oaks were devoured by the flames, and only the Confederate monument survived, its base glowing red from heat. The fire continued an eastward march to Hogan's Creek, where a citizen's bucket brigade stayed the flames. Then turning south, the Inferno roared to Bay Street's riverfront docks. Extreme heat caused a water spout in the river where rescue boats trolled for survivors. The fire was so intense, black smoke clouds could be seen as far away as South Carolina. As flames moved west on Bay Street, the firefighters gallant stand and dying winds brought the fire under control by 8.30 p.m. In just eight hours, nearly 10,000 people were homeless, 2,368 buildings were lost, 146 city blocks were destroyed, but miraculously only seven people perished. Jacksonville's 1901 fire remains the most destructive burning of a southern city in U.S. history. It's after the fire of 1901, Jacksonville had to rebuild. You had architects who came down like Henry J. Clutho and they rebuilt Jacksonville. With the warm weather as well as a newly built downtown, this greatly appealed to film studios who would make their way south. In 1907, a movie studio opened in New York called Calum. Well, they went south to find a place they could film in during the winter because it was too cold in New York to film. Uh, most of the film studios were at that time in New York and Chicago. So they went south, they ended up in Jacksonville. And that was in 1908 and Kalen was the first to come to Jacksonville. They came to this spot here and they ended up setting up a shop in the Roseland Hotel. And they ended up building a studio here adjacent to it and when they did so they became the first studio to film year-round now Kalem's important because they were the first movie studio to ever do a film adaption of Ben-Hur as well as Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde those were not recorded here though uh, they mostly did Civil War pictures here They were the first and other movie studios followed. Uh, in 1917, KLM got bought out by Vitagraph.
Now this is right here. This is right here on Talleyrand at Clarkson where they set up at Roseland. There's also a movie studio listed at being the Ostrich Farm, which was just north of here on Talleyrand. They set up shop in uh, 1913 called Majestic Punch. There's another studio listed on Talleyrand as being Black Diamond Studios. Uh, not much more noted about that other than there was a listing. And they had a similar one in Pennsylvania, 